earlier in class we talked about the prehistoric period, and particularly the Neolithic period, and we had looked at how some of these Neolithic people from uh, Asia Minor in modern Turkey had in fact also settled on the Cyclades Islands, the Socratic culture, where they made idols using the abundant marble in the region. Part of this group from the Cyclades then settled on the island of Crete around 2700 BC. And unlike the Cyclades people, they did have writing, though much of it is undeciphered. This writing is called Linear A, and it's one of the earliest writings uh, for the Greeks, uh, but like I said, much of it is not yet to be translated. Um, the island at Crete, and in particular the palace of Knossos that we see here, seems to have been the basis for the great legend of King Minos and the Minotaur uh, that we read about uh, in both the Iliad and the Odyssey uh, by Homer. And this gives the historians the name for the period. We call this the Minoan period, these early settlers on Crete. Now, the legend of King Minos and the Minotaur is that the city of Athens, here on the mainland, had to give Minos seven male virgins and seven female virgins every year as a tribute. And King Minos would sacrifice them to uh, a half bull, half man that was born uh, when his wife slept with the bull, so says the legend. Um, on the third go-around uh, of this, Theseus goes as one of the boys, the great Greek hero Theseus, um, and Minos' daughter, Ariadne, falls in love with him on his arrival and she's going to help him uh, navigate this maze where the bull is trapped and, and gives him the ball of string that he can he can follow his way back out with. Uh, so Theseus goes in, uh, fights the bull, wins, uh, follows the string back out, grabs Ariadne, and escapes from her evil father, King Minos, taking her little sister with him. So Theseus off to sea. Uh, with Ariadne and Sendra. Um, en route back to Athens, uh, Theseus fell in love with the little sister of Sendra, and he dumped Ariadne on an island uh, in the middle of the Mediterranean. It's not a particularly nice thing for him to have done, but it worked out really good for Ariadne because the uh, island where he left her turned out to be the island where uh, Dionysus uh, ruled, and so here is Dionysus coming to greet her, stepping off of his chariot. Here's Ariadne, and there's a little boat in the background, uh, where Theseus is sailing off with her sister. So she really made out pretty well, living on a Greek island with the god of wine. So why is this palace linked with this mythology? A lot of it has to do with a seeming maze of rooms that leads from the main unprotected entry through a series of mazes that lead to uh, what seems to be a jumble of rooms with many twists and turns in the different uh, hallways uh, that we work our way through. Uh, over here on the left side, uh, we see a, a series of supply rooms that we are led around and then eventually leading us to uh, some of the ceremonial rooms for public uh, entertainment. One of these ceremonial rooms is a uh, throne room that overlooks the courtyard, uh, broad open courtyard that is in the center of the entire palace complex. If we look to the north of this courtyard, we find decorations in relief, originally painted, here's repainted, that show images of bulls. Uh, and in fact, here at the north end, there's, or excuse me, right at the entryway, there's a shrine in the form of bull's horns, very abstracted, uh, by the south entrance. Um, these focuses on bulls suggests to us that this, uh, palace had something to do with that, uh, mythology. 
on the upper floors of the east side of the courtyard is the famous uh, bull leaping fresco that we talk about in class. And we think that this represents rituals and entertainment that took place in that central courtyard. And probably these rituals with the bulls, uh, with all of the decorations at Tenosis, helped to fuel the Greek mythology that this was the site of King Minos. Now, whereas the ceremonial rooms and storerooms are here on the left of the plan, uh, to the west, um, to the east side are the residential quarters for the king and his court, as well as servants' quarters, because they need to be nearby. And these are connected by a series of wrapping stairways that link the different levels and wander around just as the entrance wandered around. And this, uh, again, probably is part of the myth of the maze. Uh, that the bull was kept in, because it is a maze-like arrangement with bulls. Um, everywhere throughout the palace, you can see this unique form of columns. They're wooden, and they taper to the base with a sort of cushion capital, and are very, very brightly painted. Uh, these are the earliest examples of them, and they're uh, unique at this point in history. Uniquely Minoan capitals. Uh, they'll be picked up by other cultures later. Um, one of the rooms here in the residential area is decorated with incisions of a double-headed axe. The Greek word for the double-headed axe is labyrinth. And so even if this isn't the basis of the myth, and I believe it is, um, it certainly is the basis for using the word labyrinth to mean maze, because the word labyrinth originally meant simply a double-headed axe. That double-headed axe may also have some significance to the rituals that we were talking about. Here is a, uh, uh, a riton, which is a uh, uh, sort of a ceremonial um, picture for liquid, uh, up in the Walters Art Museum. And it's not out on display, so I only have this black and white photo. But um, carved into its head, and you can't see it in this picture, is a double-headed axe. So there seems to be some connection between uh, the labyrinth the double-headed axes, and the bull rituals uh, that dominated life at Kenosis. So in all, we have a, a complex and multi-leveled space. Uh, here's a reconstruction of the palace at Kenosis. Um, and you can see that uh, the walls are very brightly painted. Uh, many of them rely on aquatic motifs, these happy dolphins and fish with the... Uh, coral or algae uh, along the top and bottom. Uh, here we have a throne room uh, in overlooking the courtyard, and we can see here in this throne room that there is, again, more aquatic motifs, these wave patterns and reeds, but now uh, a decorative griffin, a cat with a bird's head painted brightly on the wall. Uh, there were many thrones in the palace of Kenosis. This is one of many throne rooms. But again, it shows us uh, how really gaily and brightly painted these all are. Um, at its height, Minoan civilization spread away from the island of Crete and spread to the Cyclades Islands and eventually to the Greek mainland. Uh, and here we're looking at the uh, Cycladic idol of Thera, where we see the Minoans have spread, spread back, and the same sort of decorative, brightly colored aquatic motifs, uh, birds in the sky, but also these uh, shoreline rocks uh, with uh, sea vegetation growing off of them, looking very much like coral with these uh, bright aquatic colors. Uh, so this is not on the same island of Crete, but it's still Minoan, because they have spread by that point. This really all came to an end uh, around the year 1500, when the island of Thera exploded. It was a volcano, and you can see the cap of the volcano here. Uh, the inlet, where all of the cruise ships land, made by this uh, massive explosion. There's the airport for tourists as well there. Um, this covered the palace at Akrotiri in Ash, 
and so it could be excavated later, but it obviously sent a massive uh, tsunami out, which uh, seems to have seriously weakened or even totally destroyed uh, the Minoans on Crete. 